our guests for being here. It is now time for a member statement. The member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Perth, Wellington needs more family doctors. The government should be well aware of that fact. For the last three years, my constituents and I have told them so. In July, I asked the Minister for information on the number of my constituents registered with the government's Health Care Connect program and how long they are expected to wait on that list to be matched with a new doctor. The numbers are staggering, and they support the point that my constituents and I have been making for years. According to the Minister, on average, individuals in, from Perth Wellington who are currently registered with Health Care Connect have been waiting on the list for 309 days. And as of March 31, 2014, there was an estimate of 927 individuals from Perth Wellington registered with Health Care Connect. Since March 2014, another doctor, uh, since March of 2014, another doctor in Perth Wellington has closed his practice, so that number must be even higher today. Mr. Speaker, many of my constituents would find it inexcusable that the government is aware of these facts but has offered no effective plan to address the issue. This morning, in a letter that I hand-delivered to the minister, I expressed my dissatisfaction with the government's action to date. I also called on him to take the necessary steps to improve the situation. I hope the minister will listen. I hope we, he will ensure that everyone in Perth Wellington has access to, a medical, to the medical care they deserve now, not 309 days down the road. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, I had the opportunity to tour the John McGivney Children's Centre in my riding of Windsor West. Since opening its doors in 1978, the centre continues to provide rehabilitative services and resources to children and youth with special needs and is one out of only 21 children's treatment centres in Ontario. While the centre offers a number of excellent programs off-site and at the JMCC school, their early childhood preschool program is second to none and a true asset to our community. This unique preschool provides students with a multidisciplinary atmosphere that incorporates therapy and family goals into a learning environment. The preschool specializes in dedicated programming designed to maximize a student's development in functional communication, literacy, numeracy, and social skills. Ensuring that children with special needs understand their self-worth and realize their potential is at the core of this model. This exceptional programming, combined with the expert faculty and staff, allows the John McGivney Children's Centre Preschool to offer youth and their families a transformative experience that they would not receive in a less specialized setting. Speaker, this is an excellent program, and its value to the development of children, families, and our community as a whole cannot be understated. I would like to thank CEO Elaine Whitemore, Executive Assistant Karen Monjo, and Tony Bryans, Manager of the Preschool Program, for their tireless efforts in developing and administering this program, along with everyone at the John McGivney Children's Centre for their hard work and dedication. I've risen many times in this chamber to boast of the sense of community and culture of acceptance in Windsor and its institutions like John McGivney Centre that prove my point. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Halton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House today to mark World AIDS Day. This day gives us the opportunity to celebrate how far we've come over the past 35 years and to reflect on the work that still must be done to put HIV-AIDS behind us forever. December 1st also marks the start of Aboriginal AIDS Awareness Week in Canada. This year's World AIDS Day theme is Focus, Partner, Achieve, an AIDS-free generation. These words summarize the goals of our HIV-AIDS programs in Ontario. HIV-AIDS continues to be a serious concern. It is listed by the World Health Organization as one of the top 10 leading causes of death worldwide. In Ontario alone, there were 843 newly diagnosed cases in 2012. But there is hope. Since 2004, the number of new HIV cases has been trending downward. This is due in large part to our government's approach toward HIV AIDS. Our strategy is focused on prevention, but also on education, testing, treatment, support services, research, and most importantly, reducing the stigma towards those suffering from HIV AIDS. Our achievements are also the result of strong partnerships and the hard work of our community partners. I'm pleased to say that we are entering a very optimistic time in the history of our fight to end HIV AIDS. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Member Phoenix, the member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to share in the celebration of the Majestic Women's Institute's 75th anniversary. On November 12th, I had the pleasure of joining the celebrations in Brussels at the Melville Presbyterian Church, where I presented President Ruth Bauer a certificate of celebration in recognition for the group's efforts since their establishment in 1939. The Women's Institutes across Ontario offer educational programming and community support for women in rural Ontario. Together, members identify needs in their community and advocate for social, environmental and economic change and work towards the personal growth of all women for home and country. Over the last 75 years, the Women's Institute has advocated for the many notable changes in their community, ranging from the mandatory pasteurization of milk to promoting safe streets with crosswalks and flashing lights on school buses. It's important to recognize groups such as the Women's Institute who encourage women's participation and leadership within their communities. As a member of the steering committee for the Canadian Women Parliamentarians Canada region, I recognize the value and strength women can contribute to society when given the opportunity. And I tip my hat again to the Majestic Women's Institute on their 75th anniversary as a very special rural women's organization as, and as they, they live by the Mary Stewart Collect, they never forget to be kind. Thank you very much. Thank you, Member Stevens. The member from Temiskimi, Cochrane. Thank you. This weekend, the sound of swords and musket volleys broke the silence of the usually peaceful streets of New Liskard. No, it was not a local uprising, but rather a reenactment of life in a New France Christmas village. The actors were local volunteers who took part in the first annual Village Noël project in Temiskimi Shores. The main streets were cordoned off, and cars were replaced with cedar kiosks with local crafts and foods. Carolers and voyageurs wandered among the fire pits. It was a beautiful scene, a worthy reminder of our French-Canadian heritage. Sadly, early Saturday morning, another sound woke residents. The wail of fire trucks and ambulances as part of New Lisker's downtown core was on fire. Several people were taken to hospital, six families lost their belongings, and two businesses were destroyed. Glen Walton Shoes was a landmark in our area. The shoe store was opened in 1953. Glen took over in 58 and sold the business to his daughter in 2013. Glen and his family also lost a lifetime of memories in the fire, including his trophy fish and hunting pictures. Tammy Penner had operated Watch Me Grow for over eight years, and she is devastated by the loss of her business. In the end, the firemen at the scene had to destroy the building to get the fire completely under control. Because of the fire, a large portion of the Village Noel was itself cordoned off. In a true show of voyageur resilience, the organizers regrouped, moved the entertainment venues, and extended the hours on Sunday to accommodate the annual Chris Santa Claus Parade, which had to be moved from Saturday. I would like to take this opportunity to thank not only the volunteers of Village Noel, but the firefighters and other first responders who keep us safe and make our area such a great place to live. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Stevens, the member from North Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to speak about York Memorial Collegiate Institute, one of the oldest schools in Toronto, located in my riding of York Southwestern. York Memo, an institution of higher learning built in memory of the youth killed in the First World War, this year celebrating its 85th anniversary. The school has consistently provided the highest quality of education to each and every student who has entered their doors since the school inception in 1929. York Memorial has also developed one of the most impressive advancement placement programs in this province, offering more competitive AP courses than any other secondary school in Ontario. These challenging courses are recognized nationally and internationally and in many universities. In fact, four years ago, York Memorial had eight national AP scholars. This was the highest number of any school in Ontario. York Memorial Collegiate counts a number of notable alumni, Mr. Speaker. One sits with us today in this legislature, notably the member from Oakville, now Minister of Labour, and the member for Scarborough Aging Court also served there right as a public nurse. Right I am very proud of this institution, Mr. Speaker. My sincerest congratulations go to um, the principal, Mrs. Susanna Greenaway, the staff, and all the students for celebrating this impressive milestone. Thank you. Thank you. The member from Thornhill. Monsieur le Président, Mr. Speaker, in my name and in the name of the whole 
Conservative Caucus of Ontario, I would like to express my congratulations to the former uh, General Governor Michel Jean, who, like we know, has been chosen as the General Secretary for Francophonie, and she is the first woman to fulfill these uh, responsibility. I'm sure that for the next four years she will defend the Francophonie and the fr Francophone culture in order to promote the language and to strengthen the economic action in the Francophone world. As a woman in politics, speaking French and spokesperson um, and uh, critic for Francophone Affairs, I am yeah, very happy to wish her well. I know that for the f next four years will be a difficult mandate. However, they will be full of knowledge. I can't wait to work with La Francophonie in order to strengthen our Francophone relations, uh, that of Canada and the world. And so once again, congratulations. On behalf of myself and the entire PC caucus, I would like to extend a heartfelt congratulations to the former Governor General Michel Jean, who has just been chosen as Francophonie's newest Secretary General and the first female. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Statements, the member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, uh, I'd like to recognize some true Canadian role models today from the Canadian Paralympic Committee who focus on creating a province and indeed a nation where every person who lives and works among us can participate in sport, whether or not he or she is living with a disability. Roughly one in seven people in the province of Ontario have a disability. That's more than a million Ontarians. And worldwide, that's more than a billion people who live with a disability. Early, I, I recognized Tyler Miller, who's visiting Queen's Park today in the uh, Speaker's Gallery, who's here in support of the Canadian Paralympic Committee and their efforts across Canada. In 2012, Tyler successfully took part in the Paralympic Games in London, England, where Team Canada captured a gold medal in his sport of basketball. In addition to his success, Tyler received the 2012 Civitan Sport Award for Top Athlete of the Year for Kitchener Water and Waterloo. In 2010, Tyler Miller was part of the team that played for 24 hours straight breaking the record for the longest wheelchair basketball game ever played. Tyler will represent Team Canada at the Toronto Parapan Games in men's wheelchair basketball. This afternoon, the Canadian Paralympic Committee is hosting a reception from 5 to 7 in room 230. Let's welcome the Canadian Paralympic Committee as they continue to grow the Paralympic movement leading up to the 2015 Pan Am Games. Thank you. Thank you. From Ottawa, Orleans. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today is World AIDS Day on this um, December 1st, and it gives us the opportunity to think about people who uh, have passed away because of this disease. Today, in this um, day, we have the uh, theme Objective Zero, which means we want zero discrimination, zero HIV, and zero death links to, um, to uh, AIDS. I met Caleb Salam and Gord Asu from the, committee, the AIDS Committee in Ottawa. The CSO is a community organization, non-profit organization, offering confidential advice for people living with HIV or um, in, at risk of being infected. In 1985, the CSO was a small group of people who were mostly uh, homosexuals, and today we have a lot of volunteers and staff. Mr. Salam and Arnus showed me data showing that there's about 900 new diagnostics for AIDS in Ontario and 100 of them in, on, in Ottawa. In 2014, the control of this disease still requires a fight against stigma, discrimination and homophobia. Help us by getting more information about AIDS and HIV and by forgetting your own prejudice. Thank you.
Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. From uh, Northumberland, Quinty West. Well, thank you, Speaker. I beg your indulgence. I know that's uh, stepping out of bounds a little bit here, but I have two guests from the great writing in Northumberland, Quinty West, Jeff and Angela Hurst. Welcome to Queen's Park. 